you want the loot, and I've got the guide. So let's do this thing. Crota's End has returned in all its sword swinging over its old green glory, and today we're going to discuss all the roles you want to keep an eye out for and craft when you get the patterns. First, we'll talk PvP and then PvE traits. There are some incredibly strong weapons here, and better yet, Crota's End is free to all players, so anyone can get these weapons. I know free to play doesn't have access to a lot of good craftable weapons, so this is a pretty good opportunity. If you want to see more guides and other videos and streams like this, then definitely subscribe. First off, let's take a look at the origin trait, which applies to all six of the returning weapons found in the reprised set. Cursed Thrall states that after defeating an enemy with a melee attack, final blows will cause targets to explode for a short duration. It'll probably be a really fun layer on top of a good melee build. Now let's get down to the weapons themselves. Starting off with the Fang of Uryut, a rapid fire strand scout rifle, I'm already seeing some great PvP trait combos right off the bat. Tunnel Vision and Kill Clip both proccing after getting a kill and reloading, granting both increased damage as well as target acquisition and handling is an absolute classic if you can get rolling with it. Tunnel Vision Kill Clip is one of the most lethal combinations you can run on a weapon. I also like the look of Keep Away and Kill Clip. Keep Away is going to buff Reload, which plays into Kill Clip nicely, but the extra range and accuracy from Keep Away would also be helpful on a Rapid Fire Scout. I like the feel of Rapid Fire Scouts, but sometimes it just feels like you get some ghost bullets. Just shots that felt like it should have been good, but you get no feedback at all. Keep Away boosting both accuracy and range is really going to help this thing out, make it feel a little more viable. Lastly, for PvP, if you need help with consistency, consistency in landing shots, rapid hit's gonna feel great with each headshot adding stability and reload. Even surplus in the first column providing stability in handling and reload as well is crucial for this archetype. Some rapid fires handle worse than the spider on the micro mini sparrow would and any trait to alleviate that is a good thing. Now for PvE you've also got some good options. Rewind rounds and precision instrument look like a good pairing to me. Rewind partially refunds your mag as you continue to land shots and precision instrument grants increased damage as you continue to land headshots. Sustaining your magazine while also buffing damage is incredibly synergistic, and I could see this being really helpful in Grandmasters for uninterrupted damage to barrier or overload champions. You've also got Golden Tricorn, which you can amp up to 50% extra damage, which would be pretty doable on Strand. Not too hard to get ability kills on that subclass. You've also got Sword Logic in the second column there, which is a new trait that grants bonus damage based on the tier of enemy that you kill. I'm interested to see how this trait measures up compared to the others. Depending on how substantial the buff is, it may be more preferable to traits like Tricorn that require multiple levels of setup. Sword Logic just looks like a nice simple damage buff and it's great to see a unique raid trait as well. Don't forget all these weapons are going to be craftable as well so all these traits we're discussing can be enhanced. Usually not a huge game changer but sometimes it's just enough to push a weapon from good to great so you never know. Moving on to our next weapon is Sword Breaker. It's returned as a lightweight strand shotgun. Lightweights aren't necessarily meta in PvP right now but they did get their bullet spread reduced somewhat recently and with the right perks they can definitely be viable. That movement speed is fantastic for closing the gap. Right away, I'm seeing Fragile Focus as a good first column option. Anytime you can boost shotgun range is going to be helpful, and Fragile Focus just grants a flat 20 range while your shields are up. There are a lot of situations if you're decent with a shotgun that you can pull off the shot before your shields break, so that's just definitely going to be an option. You also have Threat Detector for extra handling in close range, and Slide Shot for extra range and the automatic reload. Super handy. Slide Shot is fantastic in Crucible, and considering sliding is basically optimal strats with shotguns anyway, it really just makes sense to run that. Running a lightweight shotgun like this with a slide boosting exotic like Stompies or Antaeus Words always feels really great. Combine any of those perks I just mentioned with opening shot for improved accuracy and range on your first shot and you'll be just about hitting the range max. On a less than meta archetype for shotguns, hitting as much range is definitely going to help you beat out those aggressive and precision frame shotguns. Barrel Constrictor is also an interesting new trait that reduces the pellet spread and I'm very curious to see just how much of an effect that has both as the base trait and enhanced. Lightweight shotguns basically were the meta before Bungie gave each shotgun archetype their unique pellet spread and the spread pattern change was really the only thing that kind of did them in. So if this helps a lot, this shotgun should feel pretty good. I, th I think many of us still remember what shot package on Felwinter's Lie did to the meta in both D1 and D2 and if I had to guess, Barrel Constrictor won't be quite on that level. But still, lightweight shotguns are perfect for an aggressive playstyle and Swordbreaker has some great traits just for that. Overall for PvE, shotguns aren't ideal but they're okay. Subsistence and Surrounded could be interesting if you want to just get in the middle of everything and deal a bunch more damage and never have to reload. I could definitely see that being fun in lower level strikes or gambit or something like that. You also have sword logic present here on this shotgun again, which may not be
be a bad option since you'll be using a shotgun to do chunk damage to majors anyway, which works out since you get a better damage buff for killing majors. I guess we'll just have to see what kind of numbers we get. Following Swordbreaker, let's take a look at Word of Crota. Word of Crota is a 180 precision void hand cannon. Always love the design of these weapons, man. Straightforward, but undeniably hive. Simpler times, man. There aren't a lot of options for PvP here, but I do like the look of Killing Wind and maybe Rampage. If I'm doing the math right, a single stack of Rampage should raise a 180 hand cannon to 66 damage per crit in the Crucible, which should be enough to 3-tap lower resilience guardians, which would feel pretty great with the increased range from Killing Wind. Either way, 180s do struggle a little bit with range, so Range Finder or Killing Wind in the first column would work just fine. You also have Demolitionist, an adrenaline junkie, so kills grant grenade energy, and then any grenade kill maxes out adrenaline at 5 stacks right away, granting a substantial damage buff. I could definitely see this being useful in some grenade builds, like Young Ahamkara's Spine for Hunters, where you snag a grenade kill and then you have the chance to get some easy 3 taps for a few seconds, and for PvE you have a few trait combos that sound like a lot of fun to me. The first of which we just discussed for PvP, Demo and Adrenaline. Extra damage in PvE is always helpful, and considering how high ability uptime is in general with the right build, you'll have this buff rolling pretty often. A Warlock build with Nezrak Sin, which would have incredibly high uptime with grenades, and Hunters using Grafalcon's Harbor would also benefit pretty well. If you feel like you have enough grenade regen rolling in, then I definitely think you'd want to swap out Demo for Repulsor Brace, which grants overshields when you defeat a Void debuff target. This role is again incredibly easy to optimize on subclasses that dish out tons of void debuffs. Your Falcons, second chance titans, or any void class running weakening grenades at all. Stacking out of those effects you could add destabilizing rounds so final blows cause a volatile explosion so you just have one more layer of depth for your builds there. If you want a less complicated role that's just intended for dealing solid damage then subsistence and focused fury, precision instrument, or a sword logic are all going to be excellent for outputting even more damage while keeping your magazine topped off. And don't forget hand can is just got a substantial buff for PvE and seriously feel much better than they used to, dealing a lot more damage to miners and a whole bunch more to majors. Next raid weapon is Abyss Defiant, a high impact solar auto rifle and this thing comes packed with all kinds of great traits. First combo is Pugilist and Swashbuckler, a natural regen slash damage combo is natural as demo and adrenaline junkie. Same situation, just with melee damage. Swashbuckler can be pretty great, especially for hunters who have ranged melees anyway, especially on solar. Get a throwing knife kill, deal 35% more damage for a few seconds. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet deal. I also think Zen Moment in the Eye of the Storm for overall consistency and accuracy will be excellent as well. Make for a great dueling role. High impact autos can be a little difficult to rein in sometimes, but with both of these perks increasing the ease with which you can land shots throughout a duel, helping you secure those kills that you might not have gotten if you just missed a headshot is going to help a lot. And don't forget all these traits can be enhanced. Lastly, you've got Target Lock in the second column, which increases your forgiveness, so you don't have to land as many headshots. I know everyone is shooting for fastest time to kill, but sometimes it's just nice to have a weapon that does consistent cleanup damage and makes your job easier. You're not going to hit headshots every time. And before we move on to PvE, the nice thing is that you can really just mix any of these perks I just mentioned. Any of these traits combined would make for a pretty solid combo offering lethality or ease of use. You even have both heal and kill clip that totally backload the traits that offer a strong post kill experience. A little bit of healing, extra damage, not too bad. And that's kind of always the issue with post kill traits in PvP, right? You have extra damage, but no health. So great, you have 25% extra damage damage, but you're going to get one shot. I know heal clip isn't really that strong, but any little bit can be enough to make a difference in the crucible. You never know. As far as PvE goes, you've also got some fun options like subsistence and outlaw to keep your ammo rolling, incandescent, incandescent, which is always fun for solar builds, and I know callus mini tool exists, but it doesn't have subsistence, and that's a really good perk for Adkler. Abyss Defiant also offers you a range that mini tool just can't. It's also worth mentioning that enhanced subsistence refills 20% of your magazine on kills instead of just 10, so it's well worth enhancing. Reconstruction is also a great option to overfill your magazine. Now for the second column, you've got a number of damage perks that would work really well. For simpler damage buffs, I'd go with a Kill Clip, Sword Logic, and Target Lock. You don't have to try too hard to get those rolling. If you want a little more damage for a little more work, you have some more build-friendly options as well, such as Collective Action and Swashbuckler. Both of these are going to reward damage to your weapon for playing around with your abilities. Lots of ways you can take this weapon, and I always appreciate that. But either way, I'm excited to give it a shot. Next weapon on the list is one that I'm probably the most interested to try. Oversoul Edict. Just look at this beauty. Simple D1 pulse rifle with just a nice touch of I super glued my defeated enemies to my weapon. It's so good. This weapon is a rapid fire arc pulse rifle, an arc type almost notorious for its competitive value in the crucible. I'm guessing you've already thought of weapons like Horror's Least, Grid Skipper, or Peace of Mind, or really fill in the blank. I'm sure just like me, you've been terrorized by a number of them in the past. And the good news is Oversoul Edict is not only craftable, but has the right traits in the right columns to compete with the other rapid fires in the arsenal. And don't forget, these weapons are free. So if you feel like you're struggling
struggling to deal with other better seasonal or DLC options, Oversoul Edict is totally free. You can craft it, play the raid completely for free. It is an old raid, maybe not the most generous thing Bungie could have done, but still. For traits, you've got Eye of the Storm and Headseeker, Perpetual Motion and Moving Target, Demo and Adrenaline Junkie, Keep Away and Headseeker. Right there, you have four fantastic combinations of either high lethality, high efficiency, or high ease of use. Personally, I'm looking at Keep Away and Headseeker, which is going to be overall buffering accuracy, range, reload, and aim assist. All of those buffs together are effectively going to be stretching the distance that you can actually land shots. You've also got Perpetual Motion and Moving Target, which would again be extremely consistent with increased stability, reload, handling, aim assist, and strafe speed. Rapid fires generally handle pretty slow, so I think combining the handling buffs with the benefits of moving target is going to make for a fantastic dueling weapon. It might take a few weeks for me to get this thing crafted up, but you can bet I'm doing a review on this pulse rifle as soon as I can. Rapid fires are some of my favorite crucible weapons, and I'm always excited to see a new one. Now for PvE, you've got some great combos like demo and adrenaline junkie. Again, you get the grenade regen plus damage, something I think fallen sunstar warlocks would happily take advantage advantage of. You've also got Perpetual Motion and Vault Shot for easy shooting, quick reloads, and lethal ad glare. Rapid Fire Pulses don't necessarily feel the most powerful in PvE right now, but with the right traits, they can definitely put in some work. And lastly, for our final weapon, Bungie had the choice between two heavy weapons to bring back and decided on the machine gun. Bummer. Song of our Ute is fortunately an adaptive, which is at least a decent feeling archetype. When it comes to PvP rolls on heavy weapons, I typically recommend running front-loaded traits, traits that give you benefits before you ever land a kill, since you don't have that much ammo to take advantage of post-kill traits anyways, typically. I'd probably try Zen Moment or Keep Away, plus Elemental Capacitor for the stat buffs or Target Lock. Not a thrilling weapon for PvP, but those are probably your best traits. As far as PvE goes, machine guns aren't viable DPS options, so you probably want to spec into using it as a strong, ammo-efficient ad clearing weapons, so maybe you can run double special or something like that. Unrelenting is going to keep you alive, feeding frenzy for the quick reloads, demo for the grenade regen, rewind rounds so you never have to reload at all, and reconstruction for the constantly overflowing magazine would all serve a pretty good purpose. For column two, I'd try a cascade point, just because shooting bullets faster is more fun, or go for more damage with bait and switch, sword logic, or target lock. Considering machine guns would be decent for burning through majors, sword logic would probably be a really good option actually. Combine reconstruction or rewind rounds with a huge magazine with sword logic, and that'll make for a pretty proficient ad clear weapon. Again, not super thrilled that it's a machine gun, but I guess it's okay. That'll actually round things out for the guide though today. That's all six available reprised weapons. Plenty of guides out there for Necrochasm, and there's no random roll, so I didn't really feel like discussing that today. Feel free to look up other guides for that. I hope you enjoyed the guide, and of course, if you did, like and subscribe for more in the future. I do guides like these, as well as build videos, reviews, and all sorts of other stuff on both videos and live streams, so definitely stop by sometime. If you don't want to miss my videos, and streams and don't forget to turn on notifications and i also release my videos slightly early for youtube members so feel free to check that out if you're interested thank you so much to the youtube members as always thank you so much for watching catch you guys next time